Welcome to Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Planting the seed of truth and growing families in the Word of God. I, I titled today Common Table because we're in a world right now that really wants to find the differences. They want to find what you believe and how it's different than what they believe. And, and they want to find how you're different from them. And they really want to get distracted with differences. What we don't have in common. And, and it's, it's used right now by the enemy, whether it's the enemy and agendas or if you want to use the devil himself. Separation is always a ploy of the enemy. Because separation is weakness. It is. And Braden and I were watching a um, jungle show about animals Saturday morning, and we were watching uh, these elephants, this herd of elephants, and then he wanted to, he wanted to see lions. So we pulled up a video of a lion catching antelope, and, and, and I got to watching, and we all know this, one of the things that the, the roaring lion watches for is the one that separated off from the herd. Why? It's weakness. It's vulnerability. And so in today's society, though we seem to be more connected than ever, we are not. Because social media is not connection the way God intended for connection. Going to church on the internet is not the connection. And I love to go to other churches online. I love that. But that can never take the place of me being in contact with you. That can never take the place of what I, I just pick up from you being around you and that I know if I were in need, all I got to do is say help. And if I stood right here, Mama, she's not my birth mom, FYI. This is my birth mom. This is my other mom although I favor her a little bit. <laughs> we both got some gray hair going on, Mom. If I say help, I can go to that first row alone. And then I just look. I look at the people that I'm connected to. The hogs, how long? How long? How old was I? Jake. This is the beauty of the body of Christ. And the beauty is in the connection. It's when you, oh, well, I, don't, I don't need that. I don't, I don't need church. Yes, you do. And if you don't today, you might tomorrow. And besides that, even if you don't, somebody here needs you. You know, we, we, we lead this life of, selfishness sometimes if we're not real careful because that's what society is what do I need well, what does the body of Christ need the body of Christ Christ himself needs us connected because we're to do the work of Christ as the body of Christ and the body does not function well disconnected I, I need all my parts connected and in unity and we just got to keep that separate mentality from infiltrating the church Jesus, the disciples, the apostles, any, anywhere you, you read in the New Testament, they saw the strength of being together. From what I read from the Word, we're supposed to be together more and more as we see the day approaching, not less and less. And, and even, even a text is not the same as, as me and Kayla talking woman to woman now. I can shoot her and I love you, but it's not the same if I look at her and say, Kayla, you ever need anything? I don't even have to say it when we see each other, we know it. I'm Aunt Susu to her. That's the beauty of the body of Christ. And how often in church announcements do we hear the word food, fun, and fellowship? I used to get on to staff all the time. It's like, okay, I do not want to hear the three F's. Food, fun, and fellowship and another video announcement. Because it's like every time we're making a video announcement, food, fun, and fellowship, 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 fellowship. And so I looked up that word out of the scripture today, 
because the Lord brought it to my attention, really kind of reprimanded me for not liking the word. And when you look it up, I'm talking about out of the concordance, the, the biblical concordance. It means to associate, it means community, which takes communing together, by the way, to have a community. It means joint participation, sharing in common, contribution, and I, I really like the last one, contact. That's what it means, fellowship, contact, contact. What a beautiful word. We need contact, and social media cannot feel that. A drive through suppers and you throw in some french fries at your kids in the third row, that's, that's not contact. And, and we've all done it, and sometimes we have to do it, but this should not be a regular. We need contact. We're made for contact. Working from home. I'm thrilled that you can work from home. I think that's great, but don't lose contact because contact's important. Having church at home online, that's great, but don't forget about the importance of contact. I see so many ways we're disconnecting from life. We're disconnecting from life. And Acts 2, let's just go to the Word. Let the Word say it to you. Am I missing some lights? I feel dark. Okay, it's got a, got a disco light going on, so you're going to spare you that. Okay. Acts 2, I'm going to read this from the Passion Translation, starting in verse 40. It says, And Peter preached to them and warned them with these words, Be rescued from the wayward and perverse culture of this world. We, we all know this. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. The direction the world's taking you is not going to be the right direction. We've got to go back to the word, see what works. This is what works. So he says, be careful. Those who believed the word that day numbered 3,000. That's the kind of evangelism I want to see. 3,000 in a day. They were all baptized and added to the church. Every believer was faithfully devoted to the following to the teacher the teachings of the apostles. Their hearts were mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regularly for prayer. A deep sense of holy awe swept over everyone and the apostles performed many miracles. I want you to look at what communion and community cultivates. Love opens the door for signs and wonders and miracles. It opens the door for amazing things to happen. All the believers were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Out of generosity, they even sold their assets and distributed the proceeds to those who were in need among them. And daily they met together in the temple courts and in one another's homes to celebrate communion. They shared meals together with joyful hearts and tender humility. They were continually filled with praises to God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were coming to life. I don't even know what to say about that. This is how the church was formed. This is how the church is kept. And it's not about, it's not just about a church, a building. It's about you outside of this building, communing together, praying together, bearing one another's burdens, helping each other. And you can't do that if you who sit over here don't know you who sit over there. You don't know. You don't know what they're going through. If you're not in contact with people, how can we function with this kind of beauty disconnected? The truth is we can't. We can't. So we, we've got to, in our society, of what they think is connection, which is really disconnect, because with every kind of connection that society has right now, we can disconnect when we want to. We can turn it off when we want to. Human connection is more committed and more devoted than that. And we need to get back to some of it. Have somebody over. 
Go to the ball game with somebody. Let's, let's start cultivating community, the community of faith and the church. It, it's the beauty and the miracle of the church. It's, if you look around this room, we're so different. I mean, we are so different. He's a turkey farmer. I've never, I've never been on a turkey farm. But you know what? Scott and Charity and Rusty and I connect. We connect. They have young kids. We've got old kids. <laughs> Adult kids. I mean, what do we have in common other than hunting? <laughs> Tis the season. You'll get a lot of hunting messages real soon. What do we have in common? We have one common table to meet at that all four of us have in common. Yeah. That's God. And that's all we need. And I look around this room and I see people who were raised poor. I see people who were raised privileged. I see people with higher educations. I see people with, with no education. I see people who can read, who can't read. I see many different colors of skin. But we have a common table. And there's hundreds of us here today. And yet, here we are eating together. Eating, take, partaking of the word together. We're going to go out to the picnic. We're going to partake together. Only in Christianity. So the words that I picked up on in Acts 2, when I went back through there, these are the words that I love about that passage. Added, devoted, linked, sharing, together, fellowship, one body, generosity, celebration, communion, joyful, hearts, tender humility, continually filled, praise, enjoying, favor, coming to life. There is, a, there is a connection between joy and enjoyment and connection with people. You want to know who goes out and uses their AR to kill hundreds of people? People who are not connected. Yeah, that's true. People who have disconnected. I have an AR, but I'm connected. So mine's to shoot something in the pond or at a target. Connection's important. It's, it's important for the, for the mind of the human to be connected to each other. And it's the most important message we're going to preach today is not going to be from here. It's going to be out there. It's going to be out there. I'm just preparing you. This is just your appetizer for the message that you're going to receive out there. And I want to stretch you, antisocials, because I get you. I do. I get you. It's my personality to want to go sit at a table by myself and enjoy my food. I'm perfectly happy with that. But I want to stretch you to be biblical over your personality. And when we talk about taking the word and put it over our, our bodies when we feel sick, we talk about taking the word and, and using it over our finances when things don't look good financially. Let's just take it and put it over our personalities and see what happens. Don't lose your personality. By all means, I get a kick out of your personality. I love to watch certain unsocials in the room try to be social. It's great. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there grinning at you, John Glenn, because I know we have the same bloodline. But man, when somebody puts forth the effort to know you, doesn't it mean something to you? When somebody puts forth the effort to be interested in you, it means something. Go to Galatians 6. My clock's gone. Y'all just holler at me. Don't let me go too long. I, I, I've got a short message today because, like I said, we're going to preach it out there. But my clock's not on the wall. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Galatians 6.10. I'm reading it to you out of the Amplified. So then, as occasion and opportunity is opened up to us, let us do good to all people, not only being useful and profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing. Oh, I love that. 
Be mindful. You know, because we get caught up in our own thing. We got 10 kids in the line. We got to get their plates fixed, get them to the table without spilling anything. I understand that's where your mind is. But at, at the At the same time, somebody in that line doesn't have a kid to carry a plate for. So be mindful of that mama who's got a load of kids here and no help. Let's be mindful of each other. And you would think this wouldn't be something we have to teach in the church. But we're probably going to spend some time the next couple of weeks talking about respect for each other as human beings honoring the life of, that of each other and being mindful of each other. And Ashley and Tim and I, you know, sitting around as pastors talking about things that we have to deal with in today's church compared to what dad had to deal with with, with y'all in the 70s and 80s. Well, look, when I was growing up, Andy Griffith was teaching the word. It, they may not even know who Andy Griffith is. Nick at night or something, I'm sure does replays. You know, we were watching shows. We were growing up on shows that taught good moral value and respect for human life. We were, we were getting it in the music. We were getting it on the television. We were getting it at home, and we were getting it in the church. In fact, the church really didn't even have to teach it that much because it was just in society, in our schools, our school systems, we stood up, we said the Pledge of Allegiance. We were patriots. Those of us who grew up during those years are still patriots. We still honor our country. and We love that we live in a country where we have freedom of religion, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the military. We're not out causing havoc. But today's society, we have to cover things in the church that we never thought we would. Love one another. Be devoted to one another. Be mindful to be a blessing, it says, especially to those of the household of faith. You belong to a family called the household of faith. The Amplified says, those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. Be mindful to be a blessing today. This is family. Well, I don't know them. Get to know them. They're family. You may not ever need them, but they might need you. Mark 3. Jesus said something so... I mean, it's it's, honestly, it's almost offensive. Well, I mean, Jesus could really rock some religious minds. And when he said this, I'll give you time to get there. Mark 3, verse 31. (laughs) Jesus' mother, kind of like Lou, went up to West when it's time for praise and worship to start. (laughs) That was great, Lou, by the way, wherever you are. Jesus' mother shows up. He's busy. He's fixing to minister. And Jesus' mother shows up and and his brothers. It says then, verse 31 says, Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent someone to call him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Hey, your mama wants you. Listen to Jesus. Who are my mother and my brothers? Now, Lou, you'd you'd whoop him if he said that, wouldn't you? Who, Who is my mother and my brothers? Who? And he looked at those seated in a circle around him, And he said, here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. I don't know about y'all. That's that's way stronger than us just reading it, Angela. What he just said in front of his own mama... He said, these people sitting around me right now, this is my family. And I just nearly cry because I know that. This is, this is my family and on my worst day. Do you know who was there? You were. You were. Some of you, before my own flesh and blood got there, you were. 
that means something to me. That makes it impossible for me to harm myself. That makes it impossible for me to harm you. This is what we need in society. Devotion to one another. I just, those words, y'all just take Mark 3 and just, man, meditate on that. and Don't live separate lives, but look after one another. And don't let your differences overshadow the one, the most lasting, most powerful bond known to humanity. It's not blood. Well, I guess it is. <laughs> Jesus' blood. That's what connects us. We need each other. We're weak otherwise. Philippians 2 will be the last scripture we cover, Brian, if you want to let the kitchen crew know we're getting close. I'm sorry, I do have one more after that, but I won't be long. Philippians 2, I'm reading out of the Living Bible. It says, is there any such thing as Christians cheering each other up? Do you love me enough to want to help me? Does it mean anything to you that we are brothers in the Lord sharing the same spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic at all? Then make me truly happy by loving each other and agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, working together with one heart and mind and purpose. And don't be selfish. And don't live to make a good impression on others, but be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. And don't think, and don't just think about your own affairs. Man, we got a me Facebook society. We don't want to see your face every day. I mean, different poses, different lips. We have a very look at me society to the point that people are trying to do more and more and more graphic and outlandish things to get more attention on themselves that's not christianity me looking on the interest of you that's christianity and that's what we'll add to the church daily when we begin to live that kind of life so he says be humble thinking of others as better than yourself and don't just think about your own affairs but be interested in others too and in what they are doing i should go back to the definition associate participate community Commune, contribute, share, contact. I don't need it. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. And people need you. John 13, we'll close with this. John 13, 35. Can we end with a command? Not a suggestion. And it's not from me. That makes it even better. It's from Jesus. He says, a new command I give you. It's real simple. Love one another. Love one another as, it gets even better, as I have loved you. Love one another. By this, man, those are some huge words right there. You know, we try all kinds of ways to evangelize. Okay. Let's get this bumper sticker on the back of our car. Let's advertise the church with, with this yard sign. Let's put this ad on the radio. Let's, let's make our announcements look better. I mean, we do try, we, we try to do things better to make it more appealing by all means. But don't forget this statement right here. He says, by this, men will know that you are my disciples. By this. By what? By how we treat each other. By how we treat each other. By how we greet each other. And, I, and, you know, when they wrote this, when they were talking about all this coming together and sharing meals together and praying together and the joy that was felt that we just talked about and how they celebrated and, and how they were filled with joy, this was not an easy time for the church. They weren't sitting on cushioned pews with air conditioning. By the way, it's really nice and cold in here today. They were, the, the world was against the church at this time. The Christians were being persecuted. And yet it talks about joy. 
and it talks about favor and it talks about communion and it talks about sharing in the midst of their hardest time the hardest time of the church there was still joy that was cultivated they cultivated their environment with each other we got to learn to do that to cultivate our environment with each other and when they did that and when love flowed between each other then signs and wonders and miracles started taking place love is the environment for the goodness of God to show out it is I just want to encourage us not to come to church sit on a pew and walk out the door now there may be services that you have to do that you know there, there may be things that you have to take care of but to the, to the point that you get involved with each other, not just inside the walls of the church, but life. Life. What, what do you know about me? What do I know about you? I, I sat and picked John and Mandy's minds last night over dinner because, uh, Mandy, what do you do? I mean, I know you work for the schools, but what do you do? We just know each other on such a shallow area such a shallow level and and you're never going to get to know everybody in here but you ought to have a pretty good circle by now get involved be a part not just for yourself but for the people that are around you because you have something no matter what level of maturity you're on in the word you have something that somebody in here needs and, and it means something just for you to be here but be a part. Amen. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. We pray that this message has uplifted, encouraged, and motivated you today. You can find us online at rccenter.org or visit us at 305 Lakefront Drive, Russellville, Arkansas.